Hi, my name is Masha from the Coding Blonde, and today we're talking about front end because it's front end February. You may have seen my interview with Nick, who is an instructor at General Assembly, and today I'm talking to him again, this time about front end because he also teaches web development. So let's hear from Nick. Hi again, Nick. Hey, how's it going, Masha? Good, Nick. How are you? Very good. Glad to be here. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for giving me an interview yet again, and uh, this time about front end. Yes, very excited. I'm very excited about all the knowledge you're going to share with my audience because the Hopefully. last video was incredible. Thank you. Um, so let's jump straight into it. The first question, and that is the topic of this video, is what is front end? Gotcha. So the way that I try to explain this to my students, we have a few analogies because uh, learning code is a very esoteric concept. It's not necessarily hard. I think it gets a bad rap for being very difficult. It's more just we don't have a lot of analogs to explain it to. Mm -hmm. So I like to go with a couple different metaphors, the first being uh, a restaurant. So if we had a restaurant, you have a dining room where people are sitting and they're eating and they're ordering food. And then you have a kitchen where people are preparing the food, they're putting the ingredients together and then serving it. So in this metaphor, the front end is the dining room. You come in, it looks pretty, it's styled, it's uh, the client side, the front end of the website. It's what you see on your computer. And you're given a list of options. So if you were maybe eating at a Twitter diner, you come in and they give you a menu where they say, would you like to post a tweet? Or perhaps um, look at other people's tweet tweets or follow a hashtag. That's the menu. You select that and the waiter goes back and he says, uh, what I'd like you to do is make a list of tweets based off of this hashtag for our guest here. The chef will then take it and then she'll assemble that out of raw pieces. Uh, mm -hmm. And I kind of attribute this to uh, the chef being the back end language and then they go to the refrigerator to grab the raw pieces out. Uh, from that the would, database. From the database, exactly. So uh, there's a lot of steps in between here. For instance, you are able to order a salad. You don't have to tell the waiter, I would like a bowl of lettuce with small carrots inside of it and then a drizzled vinaigrette with some spices mixed into it. They're just like, it's a salad. I know what you're saying. You're ordering a salad from me. But the chef has to be able to think in raw ingredients mm -hmm. and order that from the pantry and the refrigerator. They have to know that when someone says salad, they mean leaves and carrots and cucumber, whatever else you put in there. So the front end is primarily about how do we serve the user and make the choices that are available to them uh, logical and easy for people to understand. You know, you get into these existential questions of what is a salad? Mm -hmm. How do I let no users know that when they order the salad, it does have cucumber on it? Do I list that? Mm -hmm. How do I make that an option? So the front end is about how do we take the wonderful work that the back end that the chef is doing and make it presentable and easy to deal with. That's, that's amazing. And um, actually, you kind of already answered my next question, which is, what is the difference between front end and back end? Yeah. Uh, if you want, I can sort of recap there that basically the back end is assembling the raw ingredients of data mm -hmm. uh, on a server. And then the front end is taking that data and displaying it in a way that's beautiful, but also useful and uh, technically viable to the way that the chef is working. Mm -hmm. That's, I think that's the perfect analogy and I, I love that because I was doing a lot of videos um, that I called Blonde Dictionary where I explained things with yeah. something that you can visualize. Yeah, because absolutely. I'm dyslexic and I realize that it comes yeah. from that because I like visualizing things. So guys, visualize a kitchen and visualize a restaurant. There you go. <laughs> that's the perfect, perfect description um, of front end and back end and what because now that we visualize what that is and yeah. how these two kind of interact, what would you say the front-end developers actually do? Because it's still quite a mysterious concept. Yes. How do you make the restaurant piece? How do you do all that? So yeah. basically, on the front-end, you have three major languages you're mm -hmm. dealing with. You have HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. HTML is like the nouns of the internet. So it's box, input, button. It's just the thing itself. It can't be broken down into smaller pieces. It's just that object. CSS is going to be our adjectives. So it's the red box or the blue input field or the large banner image, mm -hmm. things like that. 
JavaScript adds the verbs, the blue form that submits data, the red image that bounces, things mm -hmm. like that. And I mean, you can make things bounce with CSS, but the basic idea here is that those three languages are all you can do on the front end. Now mm -hmm. we've made it more complicated. We have things like Angular and React now, even libraries like jQuery. But all they're doing is they're taking HTML, JavaScript, and CSS and repackaging them and changing the way that they work to make them more efficient in most cases and uh, handle data better. Mm -hmm. What this means for a front-end developer is if you were working with a back-end team and a front-end team, what you are receiving from the back-end is data and some sort of functionality. This idea that like with the Twitter metaphor, data can be added as characters and posted into a tweet. That's mm -hmm. a thing that can happen. You can sort the data inside of Twitter by hashtags. You can s sort it by timestamps. You can go to one person and look at all the tweets they've had and then specifically filter that by the tweets they've posted with images inside of them. That's what the backend developers are doing. They're taking those raw ingredients, that data, and they're forming that into functions and functionality that can then be used to create things. The front end developer now takes that and puts that, pulls that through and starts figuring out how to package that in a good way. Mm -hmm. um, a great example of this is, um, for instance, your computer has a terminal, which is back before we had visual interfaces. It's what you see on like hacker TV commercial or uh, like movies and stuff where people are just typing away and it's just lines of code. That can be used to do everything on your computer, but it's super hard. Nobody wants to input data that way. However, you know, if you had a, if you had Twitter and you're like, oh yeah, type in here with the command post tweet. Mm -hmm. Now this is the text in parentheses. That'd be a terrible interface. So the front end developer has to think, okay, how do I take the string put it into a box, submit it, and then send it back to the kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, if we're going with the restaurant metaphor, mm -hmm. again, we have this concept of a waiter. And the waiter is, uh, in web development, this would be routing. Mm -hmm. uh, the waiter takes the order from someone mm -hmm. and then gives it to the back. Uh, hmm. Comes between the back end and the front end, moving that data between those two places. So uh, the front end de developer, it's their job to put all of that data together in a way that the waiter can carry that to the backend developer and receive those instructions. And then the backend developers are putting their data in a way that when it comes out to the front end, it makes sense to that end user and that the front end developer can play with it. Mm -hmm. That might be a little abstract. I don't know if that helped. No, definitely. It, it really helps visualizing that process of collecting the data from different points, from different tables, let's say, from different yes. input forms, and then taking it back to the kitchen and being like, well, this is this is what we need to do. This is, yeah. These are the next steps. And what if, because some websites, like the example of a backend and frontend, um, that's for probably a web application, right? Where there is functionality on the backend. But there are also frontend, uh, just websites that only have the frontend, right? Correct. For example, um, let's say a portfolio yes. uh, websites mm -hmm. that if anybody who wants to work in UX should have. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. That's just an example of a front-end job, right? In most cases, yes. So you can have a front-end website that's HTML, CSS, JavaScript that looks pretty, displays mm -hmm. information, has some light functionality, maybe it sends a form away. Um, it's just the same as opening up a restaurant without a kitchen. You have limited tools, you don't have like a big oven, you can't, uh, basically for web you can't take user data, you can't save it to a database, you're just displaying information. Um, there's no dynamic component, so you're not gonna let people log in and say, hi mm -hmm. Nick, uh, welcome back to this website, mm -hmm. because it's just what we call brochure websites. It's just like a one-time document that we're showing to people. Mm -hmm. um, and just knowing front-end web development is super powerful. You can create uh, websites for causes, you can uh, showcase the work you've done, you can make a photography portfolio, things like that. Um, a lot of times when I'm doing freelance, uh, if it's a small business I'm working for or a friend who's trying to launch a, a product or something, just a front-end website of just displaying what their work is and then like linking to their Etsy shop or something is mm -hmm. totally fine in most cases. Fair enough. Yeah, that's, that's amazing that just knowing those three languages, people think, people never know which languages to start with, right? And yes. 
if you want to be able to create a website, these are the languages that you should learn. Absolutely. This is the basic. And I hope I'm not skipping ahead on any of the questions you have for me here. But I would definitely say if you want to get into programming, even if your goal is to get all the way through to back-end programming, full-scale web applications, start with HTML and then CSS and then JavaScript. They're, I would say, the easiest languages to learn until we get to JavaScript, because JavaScript is pretty difficult in a lot of cases. Um, but if you really want to learn what it's like to make digital products, HTML and CSS are the absolute best place to start. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much. No worries. Um, so I hope you guys now understand uh, front end and what it is and how it works and how it interacts with back end. That's, that's amazing. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. I hope you've enjoyed that video and that you have learned some new stuff. This was part one of the three sections of the interview that Nick and I had. In part number two, we're going to go deeper into the different programming languages in uh, front end and talk about mobile app development and all that stuff. And in part three, Nick will give you some advice on where to start when it comes to front end. And also we'll give some tips on where to look for jobs and how to approach that. So make sure you subscribe to my channel not to miss any of that. And also subscribe to my Instagram and to my newsletter to stay up to date all the time. Have a wonderful time of the day you're currently experiencing. Bye.